Hello, Twitch chat, YouTube, welcome. Vintage video. It is the 20th anniversary of Magic the Gathering Online, and they're hosting special playing events. Um, by the time this video goes up, you they will already be the vintage ones will already be done. Uh, but every two days there are different events that are both constructed and limited uh, of various different formats. And on June 13th and June 14th, there are a total of 12 playing events. We're gonna have data for some of them. Should be really interesting to see what people who don't typically play the format choose to play this weekend. Um, I have already played one where I played a four color death right shaman deck. Uh, I don't have a video for that one, unfortunately. Uh, however, this one today, I'm going to play KCI. Uh, I wanted to play something fun after playing death right shaman and having the life sucked out of me. Uh, so today we're going to play a, a KCI build, um, testing this new card from commander Baldur's gate prize statue. When it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard, get a treasure token. Treasure token makes blue mana for thought monitor. I forgot to put the fourth thought monitor back in the deck. God damn it. Well, just say it's good deck building and that there are only three thought monitors for a reason. Just assume the reason is good. <laughs> uh, but basically, Prize Statue is an Icker Wellspring, so it has a, you know an ETB and a, 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 a sacrifice trigger, which means it's going to make a bunch of mana for me. Also, color fix me for blue. Uh, which makes me very happy. Uh, if you haven't seen this deck before, there's a ton of other videos on my channel. Just search KCI uh, and you can find them. So that all maybe you can check out one of those videos if you want a kind of a deck tech. But basically, a, a scrap trawler, Icar Wellspring, uh, you know, value engine where you are sacking things to Ironworks and getting things back that cost less with scrap trawler. You don't need a lot of the infinite weird combos from modern because just the power level of the Moxin uh, make this deck super super powerful. Uh, obviously no interaction in this deck, so we are, it's like on us to make our opponent beat us, or we are going to try to combo off before the opponent does, basically. That's the deal. Uh, this deck got a lot better uh, with the introduction of Saga and Thought Monitor. Thought Monitor being a low-cost artifact that is actually a high-cost artifact, so you can bring back Scrap Trawlers and stuff. Uh, very, very powerful. Uh, I want to get into this game because I am currently eating up my clock, so let's go play round one. Okay, let's do it. What do we got? I have, I don't know, this hand looks reasonable. doesn't have the key pieces, but it's got a lot of draw. It's got a lot of mana, uh, something that I'm interested in keeping. Whew, okay, sorry. I had to get that, get that, <laughs> I had to get that going real quick. No, no, no. I think uh, Urza Saga is very, very good in KCI. Um, it gives you an alternative game plan where you are actually making extremely large constructs very fast. Um, I, I like Urza Saga inside of the KCI deck. Uh, so, so Tinker in this deck gets KCI a lot of the time, but it can also get Spine of Isha, God Pharaoh, Statue, um, Transphere, a variety of things. Uh, Mystic Forge. This is the deck that uh, I think has the most variety in Tinker targets. So, can't hide this saga. We need to deploy artifacts. So what I'm going to do is go with Icar Wellspring to start. Hopefully this doesn't get, like, dazed or something. That would be sad. But I need to draw my way into action cards, and I need to get Metalcraft for Mox Opal. It's possible I don't want to play Icar Wellspring and instead want to play multiple one drops so that my Mox Opal has more likelihood of being turned on. I didn't really consider that. All right, Scrap Trawler is a great start. Now we're just looking for a KCI. Um, I think I'm going to go with Map and Star because I don't think I'm going to have time to do top things. Um... I am, I, I do think that this was probably a bad play. I should have played two one drops uh, so that my opal would have been turned on. However, you know, you win some and you lose some. So currently, um, one of the constraints of this deck is you only have four KCI, uh, which means you don't have more sack outlets. I don't like that very much. At Sometimes I've played Ravagers in the past as additional sack outlets, but uh, I'm also not playing Moon Silver Keys in this build, which helped me find KCIs. Is this just an ancestral? Oh, brainstorm, sure. 
Yeah, Doomsday. Yeah, that's a strong Magic the Gathering deck for sure. <laughs> uh, all right. So looking ahead here, I have. I don't really have because I have no other mocks and I don't have access to a nice map crack. I don't have access to cards in my yard. I actually am pretty far away from doing anything meaningful unless I draw a KCI. In which case, I am immediately winning if the KCI resolves. However, I mean, it's pretty unlikely to resolve against a Volcanic Island deck, I would say. We'll have to see what happens. The good news is if they are on, say, Blue-Red Murktide, which is a fair deck, we have a great grind game here. Uh, if we are playing against something more like Breach, it could be an issue. We could have an issue. I really like my matchup against um, like fairer decks in the format. Uh, obviously, Collector Roof poses certain problems. <laughs> uh, a lot of issues, one would say. Collector Roof is probably one of the worst cards I can see across the field. Um, but besides that, it's not... This deck is vulnerable, put it that way, but it is powerful, so. Yo, what's going on? I actually apologize. I don't seem to have a lot of voice left. That's because this weekend I went out to my buddies in Michigan for a bachelor party. And I was screaming and singing and dancing, so. I don't have a voice. So it does look like my opponent is on Breach. They're at Urza Saga. They have Needle. Uh, we'll see if this Needle name's Map. I uh, can't... Don't want to name Mana Abilities, but it could... Uh, so you don't want to, like, name KCI. But... Yeah, a little bit of an early stream tonight. Do I, Yeah, COVID. Um, I do feel better from COVID. I felt better from COVID pretty pretty soon after. Basically, for me, I had a, a, like a real bad 24-hour scare. Like, I almost went to the hospital. Um, if I was not vaccinated, I probably would have gone to the hospital, I would assume. Uh, I basically couldn't keep in any food or water, which was not very good. Um, so for 24 hours, I was in really bad shape. And then for the 24 hours following that, I was not great. Like, I stayed in bed basically the whole time. Uh, but after that, symptoms went away, and uh, I was back at work the day, the next, next day. So, um, COVID, yeah, no joke. No joke, uh, but thankfully... Uh, all vaccinated and boosted and made it through. So highly recommend. So my opponent named Expedition Map, which is fine. We weren't really going to be doing map things. A Thought Monitor is a fantastic draw. A fantastic draw. Uh, I am in the interest of playing lots of artifacts here. So let's start playing some artifacts. Currently, my Thought Monitor costs three, oh, one. So, I don't have a great... <sighs> my mana is a little short, right? Because I currently have three mana, and I have um, four cards. The Scrap Trawler is technically more important than the Thought Monitor. But the Thought Monitor is going to be really nice. A problem is they could have Pyroblast, but... I think I'm just going to deploy the Thought Monitor and see what happens. Just resolves. That's a good sign. Uh, wow. So close. So close to being amazing. If I can find a way to get a Trinisphere down this turn, I would be extremely happy. So I think what I'm going to do is play Saga and sack a Star and try to find a Moxon. That's not a Moxon. I'm going to do that twice. I think it's it's worth it to try to find a Moxon. All right, so we didn't end up with a Moxon. I can spin this top, and there are two mana cards that we can hit. There are um, Mana Crypt, Black Lotus. And I didn't hit those, but I did hit Time Vaults. So that's actually a win con relatively soon. Hmm... I think I'm going to turn this top into an emerald so that I can play a wellspring or a statue. 
Maybe. The good news is I have a lot of threats. So if, my, if I don't get like Tinker killed on the next turn, I'm going to be in good shape. Does it make any sense? Yeah, I mean, I have this floating mana I kind of want to use. It's unfortunate that we were just a little bit short of drawing into our Moxon to play our Trinisphere, but I think I would rather play this prize statue than an Icker Wellspring, because I don't really need to draw into anything at this point, but an extra mana will be nice. So I'm, I'm excited. So I actually like the spot we're in. Uh, our, the biggest danger here is our opponent untaps and tinkers us. That is the biggest danger. However, if we can survive that, I think we're actually in a great spot. I currently have one, two, three, six, seven mana, which is not an ideal amount of mana. Um, but the good news is we could maybe bait a counter spell with Scrap Trawler and then three ball them. And I think that would make us happier because we know we're drawing a top and we know that underneath our top is a Time Vault and a Mox Opal. Oh, I feel so bad about the DPS video because I don't think I played well at all. Like <laughs> the comment section is just strings and strings of people telling me how to play better, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I just had to prepare myself for, ooh, Lelia. Okay. Yes, a DPS video just went live today. Um, it was a bit of a mess. Let's put it that way. All right. So the good news is they're on breach. The bad news is we don't win the game until the next turn. Assuming I ordered my things correctly. I, I do think what I want to do here... I mean, I have access to Saga tokens, which maybe is even better. But if my opponent has Force of Will in their hand, I don't want my Trinisphere to be countered. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bait a force with a scrap trawler and then try to resolve Trinisphere, which will get me, um, which will put me in a better spot. Uh, oh, wait, did I, did anyone know if I ordered my time vault above my, my Mox Opal? Feel, I feel like I did. I need to draw that time vault next turn. Hmm. I can go back and watch it, I guess. Powers of the internet. That feels reasonably gray <laughs> in terms of <laughs> ethics, actually. But I mean, I guess anyone could record themselves and play it back anytime, right? I don't know how I feel about that one, actually. That's a kind of an interesting question. All right. So... Okay. I did order it the way I thought I ordered it. So I don't think I need to use this treasure token. I think I can hold on to it and not play my top. Ghosting myself. I'm on the next level. All right, that resolved. Sweet. I actually don't think that attacking here will matter at all. So I'm just going to hold it back to chump the Lelia, and that way I can return a star. Maybe that's not even worth it. All right, so this is interesting. My opponent gets to get Black Lotus here. But it's pretty hard for them to Breach combo through a Trinisphere. Uh, I don't know if the Breach decks currently play any main deck answers to Trinisphere. Well, it's not really streaming, Slasher. It's more recording your own play. Anyone could technically do that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna make a. I'm not gonna make a final comment of, of whether or not that's cool. <laughs> and a braid. Oh, they went for a ruby. Okay. Yeah, 
So I can make a construct, right? I don't know if I need to make a construct, but what happened? Dak Faden. Okay. That's not a bad one. What are you going to steal? Scrappy? Probably correct to steal Scrappy. Yeah. Good call, opponent. I like that. All right. So I, if I, I aim, did my opponent play a land this turn? Yeah, they did. So I'm currently winning the game. I don't even need to block. I don't really gain anything from blocking here. So I'm going to draw into my time vault, play my time vault, and activate, uh, get my key, and uh, win this game. Assuming I put the key in the deck, you know? I might not have. Manifold key. Time vault. And take infinite turns with Trinisphere protecting me. All right. That's not a bad game one. Uh, we were able to just avoid Force of Wills, protect ourselves with a three ball, and got this one. All right. So I take infinite turns, and I get to attack with this Thought Monitor and kill my opponent. Uh, I don't know if they're going to play it out just based on time. We've got a pretty similar time. We'll see. Totally allowable. I think I would probably concede because I don't even have to show my opponent any more cards. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't continue, but to be fair, I'm not on a stock list. Well, unless you look up what a stock KCI list looks like. Um, so maybe learning a little bit about my deck makes some sense. I could always misclick as well, but doesn't seem super likely okay my opponent has read the writing on the walls and we have successfully vanquished a game from breach all right what am i gonna do about breach tinker technically i'm a karn deck and i have a very large karn board um and not many of these cards do i find particularly good in this matchup mostly i have a pile of graveyard hate to beat the graveyard decks. I have a pile of dismembers to beat collector roof decks, and then I have a bunch of Karn targets. Um, so I'm not actually sure any of this is even good. Uh, I'm like an engine deck. I don't really have techie targets. Um, I could bring in defense grid. That doesn't seem unreasonable, to be honest. Uh, I don't know what I would take out. Soul Guide is good. Okay, sure. I I don't even know. I don't respect the Breach combo very high, very much, so that's a little hard to say. Um, I think I'll just take out the two prize statues. I think they're probably the weakest cards in the deck, and we'll play a defense grid in the Lantern. I know I want to try this card, um, but like the fact that those two are my flex slot anyways, I think it's pretty reasonable to bring in two cards that might be good in the matchup for two flex slots. Let's try that. Uh, this season does not have a Vintage Showcase, unfortunately. Um, vintage rotates typically with Popper as a Showcase format. Um, so this season is a Popper Showcase. Very sad. It's nice to have a couple Vintage events here, though. Sorry, Max. I did not play that game incredibly fast. I will agree. Uh, we're going to try to play reasonably fast so I can do data in between rounds as well. Uh, did I put the data in the wrong sheet? Oh, I did. All right, well, this was going to become sheet three, and this is going to become sheet four. <laughs> I put the data in the wrong sheet. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to do that data yeah, in between rounds. Brutal. Um, I... I'll probably try the... If I get a Constructed Token, I'll probably try the uh, Limited as well. I don't mind playing Limited. Alright, so this hand doesn't have enough mana, so you just put it back. This hand does have enough mana. I think the Wicked Wellspring should probably be better than a star here. 
<laughs> oh, I didn't even know Doomsday players had to think. That's news to me. Catch a couple strays here. <laughs> I just thought you start with Black Lotus Doomsday in hand and cast Ancestral Recall every game. All right, Ancestral Recall. All right, okay. Opponents got the game. Let's go. So unfortunately, my opponent resolving Ancestral Recall before me is bad because they have counter spells and I don't. Also, it's just normally bad for your opponent to draw three cards before you do. <laughs> Ooh, Ragavan. Uh, I would say Ragavan is okay against my deck. A lot of fast mana. Uh, but there also are a lot of cards that the Ragavan won't be able to utilize. Um, Does that deck play a daze? It can play a daze. I really don't want to be dazed. I also don't want to be negated. But I also don't want to get pyroed or flustered if they left those in there's a lot of things to consider and play around and i don't think i'm gonna do any of it i think i'm just gonna jam into it i think what i'll do is i'll start with a key and that's a pretty reasonable bait target here especially a misstep target as well uh i think this key like with an active mana vault is a very reasonable uh bait for my ancestral uh, if you type in exclamation for deck, you can get the deck list minus two cards because Cardboard Live does not have prize statue in its database yet. Classic commander cards. All right, so my mana, oh, not even negation, just actual factual force of will. And they're playing expressive iteration in their deck. Interesting. Uh, this is great for me. I can get that back at any time. I don't give a crap. So I'm going to jam this ancestral right now. If they had negation, they would have used it. If they had misstep, they would have used it. So unless they have two force of wills, I should draw three cards here. No, opponents on... Oh, yep, they had two force of wills. Well, yeah, yeah, two prize statues. Oh, unfortunate. The good news is we only get hit by Ragavan once, then we make Saga tokens, and we draw a Scrap Trawler, not a bad draw. Unfortunately, I mean, the good news is my opponent's down to two cards. Bad news is we don't really have that much going on. They might still lose to Saga, but Saga is a little slow. Opponent can always, you know, tinker or breach. Both of those things can happen. They can also get my fast mana. They can also get my scrap trawler. Um, I'll be pretty happy if they play scrap trawler. It means they're not doing anything with their blue mana. For me... Um, I mean, I would have been a lot happier if my Ancestral resolved, because I don't have a follow-up land, but, I mean, not much I can do against Double Force. Oh, they have their own Saga. Oh. Alright, I guess we're gonna lose. You had to jinx me like that, huh? All right, I think we are very, very much not <laughs> high likelihood to win this game as my opponent has boarded an Alpine Moon. Unlucky. All right, so I want to start by drawing a Mana Source so I can play Scrap Trawler, and then I want to draw a KCI and try to win the game. Those are, those are kind of my options. <laughs> All right, that is technically a Mana Source. Well, I mean, theoretically, we are two cards away from kill killing our opponent, maybe? It's possible. Dark Ritual Pass. <laughs> uh, welcome to the chat. Yeah, I, um... Yeah, we're not in great spot. I can't really afford to block the Ragavan either. So, yeah, not good. Not good. One mo Oh, they didn't attack? All right, okay. I would have slammed attack with both of my creatures. 
I accept no attack, though. Okay, this can draw mana, maybe. Draw a KCI, maybe. I don't have much time. They're going to make some pretty big creatures. Okay, yeah. That's not what we're looking for. <sighs> Damn it. Double force of will off ancestral. Not ideal. The mine, the moon. I didn't expect the moon, uh, but the moon looks good here. Certainly looks strong here. My opponent can uh, bring back their Black Lotus with their Scrap Trawler. <laughs> Brutal. Savage. Wrecked. I wonder if they'll bring in Ley Lines versus me. Against Ley Lines, I, uh, my, my plan is to Saga them, so that's not good. Um, because I have a second trawler, maybe, but, uh, I probably will, just because they're so big. If they attack with Ragavan, can I afford to block Ragavan? No, not really. Key does enable some outs here. Okay, so now we're attacking. Yeah, I'm gonna go get back my key. And then, uh, I don't even think drawing a time vault is even going to do it. Uh, <laughs> I guess I can, because I can chump with... Oh, it's not even going to be enough. Okay, no, it's nothing Nothing is going to be enough. I will have to draw a Thought Monitor, I believe. They just didn't cast the Icar Wellspring for some reason. Maybe that means they have hard cast negation as well. Um... Okay, I am dead. I am I am very dead. Okay, I'm I'm off it. All right, so we got mooned, and did not resolve our ancestral recall. So so we go again. Yeah, I, I still don't really like any of the other cards. I think Soul Guide Lantern Cantripping makes it reasonable, and I think Defense Grid's fine. But I don't think any of the other cards make a lot of sense. I, I can't believe I'm playing three thought monitors. That's so bad. <laughs> so there was a previous iteration of this deck that had a thought monitor in the sideboard that I could get off of Karn. And then I just never put the fourth thought monitor back in my deck. A classic play. Not the strongest. Well, the list had four thought monitors, Slasher. <laughs> It's just one was in the sideboard, and I forgot to uh, move it. Whoops. I don't know. I guess I would probably cut a prize statue to play a fourth stop monitor. I guess that would be probably what I would do. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's probably fine. It's probably totally fine. Putting fire shoes. <laughs> uh, I try to try not to tag the fire shoes too much. I do like leveraging the power that fire shoes wields, though. It's nice power. I mean, I, I think Thought Monitor is incredibly good in the deck. Uh, it's very easy to cast, and then it also like brings back anything. So, really nice card. I like this deck. I don't think this deck is like the best deck in the world, but I enjoy playing this deck quite a lot, which makes it uh, a great thing in my book. What does this do for us? I don't know, but it looks fine. The new card is like an Icar Wellspring that makes treasures. Uh, yeah, we're in round one. Should be in the bottom left. Bottom left has always got the the game. This hand isn't the best, but I think it's worth playing. I'm going to spin my top. I think it's important to find my plan. Uh, damn. All right. So we have a plan. It's a vault key. Uh, the problem with the vault key plan uh, <laughs> in in this format or in my deck is I don't have any forces to back it up so I can just die. 
and it's not exactly quick, but I think it is the plan. So, yeah. I'm going to see if this gets a counter. No counter, huh? Unfortunately, I can't get a Saga down on turn one here. All right, so I have a plan. It's just I think my plan will probably be too slow. And I don't really have a good second plan. I just haven't drawn any KCIs. It was a big reason why I liked playing Moon Silver Key. But just having access to KCI more often. Hmm. Like this would be a really nice plan if they had like a bunch of uh, graveyard hate in their deck or something. Yeah, the problem is both of those plans are slow, right? So if my opponent does something powerful, like Tinker, <laughs> we just don't have much counterplay. But we are at least putting the pressure on our opponent. We have, they have, they know they're on the clock. Well, they don't, they don't know they're on the clock yet. Next turn, they'll know they're on the clock. I guess they could Alpine Moon, and then we will have nothing. <laughs> I kind of didn't really think about that. Uh, not much I can do there, though. So next turn, we get, we're going to deploy Trap Trawler and spin our top. We'll spin our top first, and then we'll deploy the Trap Trawler. don't think I'm going to care about getting a daze at this point in the game. All right, at least there was no artifacts. There was a bottom bottom on the Preordain. That, that's a good look for us. Uh, don't want to do a replacement turn. Definitely want to get a Saga going. And then I want to start with a spin. So I'm going to start with a non-blue spin and see what we can find. <gasps> that is interesting. That is interesting. I uh, don't, can't really cast it though. Forge is an extremely strong magic card, especially with a Sensei's top in play. However, we're kind of struggling on the mana front. Um, I wish we could, like, loop some things, but we don't have any way to sack our stuff. Very unfortunate. I mean, we can sack our star, obviously, but nothing to do bring back after that. Let's go Trawler, Star, Forge, and we will just deploy the trawler so yeah next turn we technically have four mana to play a forge or we can make a big saga token um probably saga token is better because we don't have enough mana to utilize our forge and we don't really have access to other cards. So the good news is, like, next turn we could maybe uh, cycle a star and spin a top in case we find something of value. But we're pretty far away. Like, we we are two turn cycles from having a, uh, our key. And our opponent at any time can play an Alpine Moon and kill our Saga. Um, which will be pretty good, because it will actually be one of our mana sources at the moment. So yeah, we're pretty we're pretty KCI short so far these turn these uh games. We haven't been able to really find or utilize a KCI. Uh, yes, yes. You cannot kill a Sphinx with a Frenzied Trap Breaker. I, oh, the trigger. Yeah, should still be green, right? You're still targeting a green creature with a green ability, right? Isn't the flip side green? You shouldn't be able to hit target a green creature because it's a green creature. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure it's still green. 
Yeah, there's a reason that in like my weird Luris decks, I choose to play an, um, uh, the white card, Cathar Commando, instead of Outlaw and Liberator a lot, just because it kills Sphinx. My opponent just casts Brain Freeze on themselves, which is a worrying sign. So we don't want them to hit a Black Lotus, basically, and we want them to hit Breaches. All right, they did hit a Breach. They didn't hit a Black Lotus. They did hit an Alpine Moon. They did hit an Alpine Moon and a Ruby, which is a little scary. So, unfortunately, I know what I'm drawing this turn. It's a Mystic Forge. It doesn't really get me anywhere. So what I have do have access to is... Uh, cracking this star... And then spinning to see if we can find anything worthwhile. Mishra's workshop. Okay, so now we have access to Forge. If we access Forge, we don't have access to Saga Token. But I kind of think that's fine. So now I do think that is the new play. Um, do I want to keep my blue mana? No, it shouldn't matter. All right, so we have Forge plus top, but we don't have more mana to spend. We have a couple mana to spend. So we can play our top and we can play our star and then we're stuck. We can get rid of um the Scrap Trawler. All right, so they had Negation. They boarded in Murktide region. That's so odd. All right, well... Uh, the bad news here is going to be if my opponent does have access to Alpine Moon. Um, we don't have a lot going for us at that point. Our opponent could also have Black Lotus breach or breach the Black Lotus in their hand. That could kill us as well, for sure. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. Like I said, um, you don't get to play really play permission with this deck, so there's a lot of you have to accept. Sometimes you die. Blue, blue. Is this another Murktide region? That would be so good for me. Dig. Oh, it's a dig through time. Dig through time. That's not good. That's very bad for me. Well, currently Breach doesn't kill me right at the moment. Um, that needs to have um, a Black Lotus. So if my opponent like dig through times here and finds Breach Black Lotus, I am dead. Yeah, it's not a good spot to be in. It's not a good spot to be in. But the good the good news is if my opponent doesn't find a kill and, or they don't find uh, an Alpine Moon, then they do die. I guess they could find a Shattering Spree as well. Um, Dig Through Time doesn't always find what you're looking for. Oh, they found exactly what they were looking for. Never mind. <laughs> uh, not much of it. Not much man can do. Wait. That's blue mana. Nope, they just cracked the wrong color of mana. Yeah, I mean, they just cast Dig Through Time with 40 cards in their library and found the exact restricted card plus two of. Hmm? It might be a Shattering Spree. Oh, it's blue mana. No, they just couldn't decide whether they wanted to make blue or red mana. Fantastic. <laughs> Un unbelievable. Uh, yeah, all right, so we're dead. Uh, not much we can really do here. My opponent just casts Brain Freeze, targets themselves, replays their Black Lotuses, and kills us. Um, yeah, we were just one turn too slow. Uh, we kind of needed to play Saga on turn one. It was the key here. Uh, we played Saga on turn two, and it just ended up being one turn too slow. Not much we could really do differently in this game. We didn't have access to other plans very well. Um, I don't like boarding in more Graveyard Hate. I don't particularly find that quite good. Um, 
So I, I don't know. I, I think we played the cards we were given. It wasn't a spectacular opening hand. I think we mulliganed once, right? Maybe not. It was definitely a keep, and we just didn't find the things we needed. And our opponent found exactly what they needed off of uh, Dig Through Time, so... Thanks. Yeah, a little unfortunate, I would say. I think there's like a pretty high percentage chance my opponent misses on that dig through time. So. I have seven minutes on my clock ahead of my opponent, Slasher. I don't know about my slow play. I cannot will my opponents to play faster. <laughs> I can concede, though. Will I? They did concede to my time vault. Uh, Transmute Artifact costs far too much mana. I'm just kind of interested in my opponent's list a little bit as well. Yeah. Jace Vern's Prodigy, huh? And Needle. I'm also not 100% sure my opponent will be able to complete this in time. Which... Feel like I'm supposed to play to? I think they should complete it with a minute and 10 seconds left at the current pace they're going. No, they have to uh, mill me and then cast Ancestral Recall targeting me. Or just let me go to my turn. Well, I don't know if gaining information does anything at this point. <laughs> it looks like they're going to do it. So, you know what? Let them do it. And then we'll go to the next round. No worries. Skip over it in the YouTube video. But I'm holding everybody live. <laughs> it was pretty surprising for my opponent to be able to assemble this combo on turn three. I would say Breach doesn't typically assemble their combo on turn three. Um, but we got got, it is what it is. Okay, round two, Let's see if we can put up a better performance. I think we need to have better hands, better keeps. Uh, our, our, we were kind of just like a turn too slow multiple times in round one. Uh, but we, 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 you know, we put up a good fight. Uh, this hand is exactly what I'm looking for. Double Workshop Ironworks against Luris the Dream Den. Interesting. Interesting. This hand is even, like, close to doing something on turn one. Uh, I am gonna, uh, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna elect to play a Wellspring and see if we can draw into Moxon. See what happens. No Moxon, but I'm going to continue to do the things and play the cards. Okay, this is, uh, this is a very solid turn. We have a ton of mana. Uh, we do have access to blue mana off our map. And we have access to Ironworks, which is an additional two draws as well. Uh, I don't hate this hand. It kind of depends on what kind of Lurus deck our opponent is. Our opponent can be... Let's see, there are a couple of different Luris decks in the format. There is Breach, there is Mono White, there is a uh, Vigor-based Standstill um, uh, Controlling Deathrite Shaman deck. There, so we have Breach, Control, and uh, there are like a variety of different ways you can build aggro decks with Luris. Uh, white Weenie, Green White, Blue Black. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. So I have no idea what my opponent is going to be playing in terms of a Luris deck, and we'll have to see. We're currently paused in my end of second main, so maybe they're looking to vigor my map and my mana crypt, which I don't care much about. Um, of the artifact hate cards, yep, yeah, Collector Oof, 
bigger. So probably the Lurrus Control deck. Of the cards that are Artifact Hate cards in the format, KCI plays through Vigor fairly well, all things considering. It's not something I want to see, but um, it's something that it can be played through, which is nice. I don't really want that to happen, as I switched map was access to blue mana. Oh, so they have also have Probe, uh, Sapphire, Ancestral. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And a Wasteland. Yeah, all right. Well, that's not a bad draw, though. As I'm going to deploy the KCI, the question will be, do we cash in some Wellsprings? I don't know the answer to that question. Typically, I usually think yes. At least one of these Wellsprings should be cashed in. They did pitch Vigor to Oof, which I think is a, just a straight-up mistake. Oh, they just have another counterspell. Yeah. I mean, this is the problem. Opponent resolved Ancestral, and we just die. I don't think I play a misstep in this deck currently. You technically can play a misstep. I'm not a huge fan. So my opponent's deck is like a Wasteland deck, multiple Oof deck, multiple Vigor deck, um, Besage you. It's probably a, a horrific matchup for us. <laughs> not the deck we want to play against. Though, I also don't know what are good matchups for us, so... Like, Blue-Red Murktide maybe is a blue good matchup for us, and that might be it. My opponent chose not to shuffle. They have an additional Emerald, and is Urza Saga in this deck. Fantastic. And a Tarmogoyf. Always find those decks super odd. Uh, we do have our own Saga. I'm gonna hold this jet, just so they don't think we have the mana to use this Saga. Can I put screen right? What? You can absolutely see the number of cards in my opponent's hand. It's right up in the top left. <laughs> what do you mean now it's okay? What changed? Been doing this for three years and no one's ever told me that. Uh... I don't know. Uh, are, are you talking about a vintage Murktide deck? I think you should just scrap the deck. I think the deck is not good. <laughs> Actively bad. Alright, well, I think I should win a Saga battle. But I haven't played a lot of it, Min, so come on! Let me play some spells. Holy moly. Uh, I'm just going to make this now so that I don't get needled. I don't have to worry about Vigor. So my Construct is not currently bigger than this Tarmogoyf. Which is unfortunate. Oh, phone devices? I guess that could be true. Hmm. I don't think it's like an unreasonable statement to me, but I also think you can probably find room for Ponder and cut some other card to play a fourth consider, you know? Alright, my opponent's uh, Saga has turned into a Black Lotus. They've attacked with a 6-7 Goyf. Uh, I have to take all of this, or my Constructs are just not going to be big enough, which is fine. I will just take a huge chunk here. Uh, I do probably have to draw another creature. Oh, no, I don't have to draw another creature. I have a Saga. Alright, so... Interesting card. Uh, all right, so I have a Saga token. And then I only have... I do, I have six artifacts. So I can just get a... Um, I could just get a Sapphire. However, if I get a Black Lotus, I can Time Walk and Thought Monitor. Which sounds good to me. So I'm going to do that. Cast this Thought Monitor... Does it resolve? Or will my opponent cast the fourth force this game? They're going to cast the fourth force this game. Oh my lord. I feel, I feel like at some point, pitching cards should have a disadvantage. Good god. Interesting looking Black Lotus. 
I think that's the black glyphs they give you for the all access pass, right? All right, dig through time. Maybe I'm just going to get Force of Vigor now. I actually technically have lethal attacks. Which is kind of crazy. Unfortunately, I also can't go to the next phase and get rid of their mana. <laughs> that was not the land I was looking to draw here. If this... Oh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. I do think this Tinker would be lethal. We could just get a... Mm, maybe not. All right, I have to kind of hope they don't have a fluster storm in their hand. And this time walk just resolves. And then I need to draw something good after that, probably. I don't know, maybe these creatures are going to be big enough now. All right, they've resolved. Beautiful. Thank God. <laughs> All right, so the game continues. Do you have a vigor opponent is the current question. Uh, I have technically a lethal attack here. If I draw an artifact, it's very good for me. Um, I guess they could, yeah. Nope, they just drew Vigor, green card. All right, cool. All right, I don't have a lethal attack. I'm going to die. Uh, I need to draw blue mana, KCI, um, theoretically a creature that blocks, so a scrap trawler would probably get me somewhere. Mystic Forge, Kark Clan Ironworks, you say? Eh, don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Alright. I'm going to sack a Wellspring and draw a card. Oh! <laughs> Come on! Help! I need help! I need help! I don't know if that actually does anything. Um... I don't have colorful mana in my sideboard. I can get an ensnaring bridge. Ooh. Can I go like ensnaring bridge into lattice on the next turn? Well, uh, I can just attack, right? We can't get Lattice here because I will die. So that would be bad. Dying, confirm bad. However, I can get Lattice on the next one and then I think we win. Yeah, Karn is a broken magic card. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't want to have too many cards in hand, though, so I got to be a little careful, right? So I cast this, and then I can go get a Lattice. And I can just... Sack of Mox and play a Lattice. And then they die? Cool. So as long... They actually made the Construct bigger because the Tarmogoyf is now an artifact. Wait, we just won that game. Our opponent cast two Force of Vigors. A force of negation, a force of will, an ancestral recall, and I don't give a fuck, I'm KCI. <laughs> Got him. Mm. Oh, yes. 
That's what I like to see. However, <laughs> it doesn't help the fact that this matchup is still horrendous for me. Um, I'm going to bring in Defense Grid, uh, Skyship, and three Dismembers. Because my opponent plays four Collector Hoop in their deck. Uh, I'm probably going to take out Trinisphere on the... Mm. Oh, boy. Uh, I want to take out some things with activated abilities, like map, but map gets me island. Uh, I don't know the answer here. Probably statues, a star... It's rough because Thought Monitor is good, but Thought Monitor is also extremely hard to cast. Maybe I'll just trim. I'm just going to do this. Did I pick cards at random? Maybe. Maybe I did. Yeah, so this is a card I can cast off of Mishra's Workshop that kills a Collector Oof. Um, no, I don't think I want to bring out Karn, honestly. I, I haven't felt that that is something that I want to do. It is hard to cast through a collector of though, but it's also castable. Like you can just have Ancient Tomb Saga. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. I don't know. It's, it's a little random. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, that was a hell of a victory. I, if, if you had asked me after my opponent resolved Ancestral Recall and vigored two of my things, if I was possibly going to win that game, I don't think I would have responded with a yes. Um, this hand is interesting. I'm going to keep it. Maybe I should keep in the statue. I don't know. All right, let's see what we can do. What do you got for us, opponent? Seven card hand? Better make good mulligan decisions. Yeah, I mean, I think that's always true. <laughs> I think that is always the case. All right, my opponent's got a sixer, a sixer. Six plus Luris. All right, what do you got for us? Is it turn one collector roof? No, it's turn one Delta Go. Can I get a Mox? Not a Mox. All right, I think it's worthwhile to play uh, Wellspring because I think getting a Mox is actually really good here. Uh, where at, I, I do think Saga is not bad, but I think Saga also overexposes me. This is a nice sequence because uh, if you vigor these, it's not that good. Um, it's not great. But it's not that good. Uh, I will not Ancestral on their turn, however, because I don't want to uh, have them have access to negation. So I can now get Vigored on both of my Moxen, which would not make me happy. Uh, but it's also not the end of the world either. All right, let's see what opponents got for us this time. Remember, four Vigor, four Force, probably two Negation, four Oof, some Wastelands. <laughs> it hurts. It's a, it's a tough, it's, a, it's not a matchup I ever want to see across the table as the KCI player here. They, all right, so I will upkeep. Will I upkeep? Yeah, I'm going to upkeep uh, an Ancestral. I think that's the best timing here. Could theoretically wait for them to crack or something, but all right. This is an interesting set of cards. And our opponent had no Vigors or chose not to use any Vigors or chose not to use any Forces. This looks like it'll be Collector Roof. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. It wouldn't have really gotten much better for us if we had Ancestral on our turn and they didn't have Negation, so... The good news is we have a backup plan with Saga to beat a Collector Roof here. Uh, it's obviously still susceptible to Vigor and to Wasteland, but it's a plan. Uh, we also have the currently have mana sources that cast Dismember if we draw it. Um, we also have an island in our deck, true. True. Um, the island is nice because if our opponent ever besages us, we actually have a thing that we can get. 
I think I always like playing a single basic and they don't have an oof. Wow. What does that mean? That mean they're holding up a Seiju? I think that means they're holding up a Seiju. So what do we do? Unfortunately, Beseju makes God Pharaoh statue not a play. We have a lot of mana. The answer might just be deploy a Kark Clan Ironworks to start off of a workshop. I mean, it's still like blanks our tinker, right? Um, we have lots of other tinker targets, though. Technically, we could tinker for a Trinisphere, but that also technically gets blanked off by Viseju as well. I think I'm just going to play Workshop Ironworks. To start. I think that helps me play around Vigor the best. It lets us, like, eat anything in response. Cool. So now I have a monitor that costs not too much mana. What I can do is I can cast monitor and then use uh, the Wellspring mana. Okay. Okay, we're still cooking here. Oh my god, we're we're going for it. All right. Um All right, let's let's eat this opal and get a new opal in play. And then I'm thinking it's about ironworks time or about trawler time cuz I think if I'm baiting with trawler and letting forge or tinker go through, those seem really good. Also, if Scrap Trawler resolves, we can get things back with Thought Monitor. So maybe we should lead on... Okay, so the Besager's happening now. Okay, that's totally fine. I don't think I give a shit. Now, do I want an island or do I want two mana? I think I just want two colorless mana because I have access to two more blue sources. Mm, I think I'm going to win the game this turn, so I don't think I need an island. Because I'm just going to replay another Ironworks and kill my opponent. Yeah. Uh... Don't really want that, but I guess I can play it and then sacrifice it. All right, so now we just go down the chain and my opponent is very, very dead. I guess I probably could have played that off the top. It's not a huge deal. Get a crypt. Yeah. <laughs> what are bad matchups anyways? Yeah, I don't know. I think if my opponent's not playing a turn two collector roof, they're probably not keeping the correct hand for the matchup. Collector roof is the end all be all. So like simply having a Besaju against this deck is not enough velocity. Like we're, I'm just going to go right through it with a good hand. Like this is the kind of hand you want to see as the as the KCI player. I do think I kept some maybe subpar hands in round 1. They were definitely on the edge of playable though. So it kind of felt reasonable, but like these hands these hands slapped. I don't think this is a keepable hand though. I would I would be looking to have a hand with collector roof in it if I could have if, I, if possible. Like my opponent clearly had no force, no vigor just besage you and that doesn't seem good enough they did tank a while though maybe they were choosing whether to hold up besage you or oof but oof is just lights out just get play oof at all times 
Okay, welcome to round three of this vintage playing event. We're playing against Asmo. I've never seen this opponent before, so I don't know what to expect. What do we have, though? We have turn one Trinisphere. Cool, I accept. We don't have the best follow-up to turn one Trinisphere, to be fair, but we have three mana, so as long as we don't get Wastelanded, we do have follow-ups. Turn one Trinisphere... Quite a powerful card. Restricted. And if it resolves, my opponent is going to have a hard time casting spells. The bad news is there are decks that don't cast spells. Namely Dredge. All right, it's a, it's a deck that casts spells. That means we're in for a good time. So it's going to be uh, three turns before my... Or two more turns before my opponent can cast anything from underneath the Trinisphere. We also don't have a lot of mana. So hopefully our Wellspring can draw us into a, a workshop. A Mishra's workshop would be great. Ancient Tomb is acceptable, though. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I think you just risk it for the biscuit, not me. Like, it, it, I, obviously, there's a, some amount of risk involved, but Saga's not a bad one against Trinisphere. However, we now have a nice set of mana. Don't have access to blue mana yet. Hmm. So I have seven mana, so I can play Key and KCI. I definitely want to resolve this KCI while my opponent is... Uh, underneath the Trinisphere, so I don't get forced. <sighs> Will I decide to crack this Wellspring? I think it, cracking the Wellspring is worth it. Mm, yes, let's crack the Wellspring. I think there's enough hits that I would like. Like that? That is a nice hit. Um, definitely going to play a Saga here. And I'm going to get this key going. All right, so Saga represents very large constructs and also blue mana to time walk kill our opponent. I feel like we're in a very good spot. Uh, obviously, my opponent could play like third land a braid maybe, and that would unlock them. I suspect my opponent is likely, oh, they did not hit a land, so they conceded. That is why Trinisphere is restricted. It makes games where, well, my opponent didn't get to play. So... The good news is we stole one. I don't know for sure what attack my opponent is on. Technically, they're probably on either Grixis Tinker or maybe a Grixis uh, uh, Underworld Breach deck. In any case, I think the answer is we're going to board like we board against Breach. We're going to bring in Defense Grid and Soul Guide Lantern, and we're just going to take out these prize statues. Um, I think it's just like the easiest card to cut. Makes the most sense in my mind. It is a Saga Mirror. There's some upside to bringing in Needle. But I typically don't need to win the Saga Mirror by needling my opponent's Saga because my, my tokens are always going to be bigger than their tokens. So I don't really feel like there's a lot of value there. You could board in more hate for the graveyard, but I, I think that's typically... Unless you're bringing in Leyline of the Void. I think that's typically not the best strategy. I just realized I could be playing Leyline of the Voids in my sideboard now. It's a little, it's a little weird to like choose to play Leylines because you are a, an artifact-based combo deck that uses looping on the graveyard. So like it's usually better to keep things like Tormod's Crypt um, that you can loop with. We'll, we'll, we'll run with this for now. Alright, we're going to play Leylines of the Voids for 22 months. I love this deck. It's just such a fun time. I'm not, I'm not really sure where to go with this deck. Like, I don't know how to iterate on it now. I want to iterate on it more. But I just don't know what... I don't know if there are solutions to the deck's problems. Code some new cards. Yeah. There are some cards that are not on Magic Online that uh, are sitting in the red border. There's a cool one that is like makes treasure tokens and it makes like a random number of treasure tokens and then you gives it to your opponent so you can just sack it in response. Uh, I don't think Meteor Golem is better than Spine, so there's really no reason to play it. The deck's problems? Uh, collector Roof and faster combo decks. 
Also, its mana is not great. Like, I just kept a hand that has double blue cards and no blue mana. So we're trying to solve the blue mana issue by playing some prize statues, and then I boarded them out. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, technically you're playing four stars, so... There are, there are, you know, it's not like it's uh, impossible to make blue mana. It just can be difficult. Yeah, the main thing is, like, I don't have, like, a lot of the other combo decks in the format also have interaction. Like, P.O. gets to play four Force of Will and Flusterstorm. Doomsday gets to play a pile of counter magic and, and a combo. So, like, it really hurts that I don't get to play any kind of permission. I am just going to lead with the grid. The Sapphire was obviously one of the most insane draws I could have possibly hit, because now I get to just continue playing cards and time walk and go to my next turn and have blue mana. You do have Trinisphere, and obviously I don't I don't know if Trinisphere is permission as much as a combo card. <laughs> it feels like Trinisphere is more of just I win the game or I don't win the game, right? Okay, so we have a ton of mana here. I'm going to start with a Wellspring because I'd like to draw more artifacts so I can play a Thought Not... Uh, thought Not Seer. <laughs> a Thought Monitor. Oh, do we win the game? This is not 100% to win the game, but it's pretty close. So, yeah. That was a nice one. So now I can, so how many artifacts do I currently have? I think it's better to play this now while I have the most in play. So I'm going to uh, cast this and then use the ironworks off of the pearl to play it, which will give me one more mana. And then I can sack the sapphire to get the trawler and then we can start looping. So let's go. All right, so you're coming in, you're drawing me two cards, you're drawing me a Black Lotus. Yeah, why not? Why not? Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> now I have colorful mana. Um, I only have a Nicker Wellspring and a Thought Monitor. And I guess I technically have an, an Ironworks, too, so that's two Wellspring draws. I don't want to drop my grid, because I don't want my opponent to have access to counter magic. Um, so let's start by Wellspring, and Wellspring back Lotus. Oh, perfect draw. Just the absolutely perfect draw. Alright, they've actually decided we are- they're dead. They don't know they're dead, but they are dead. The star giving us two draws for each thing, the KCI being a redraw, the Thought Monitor being a full redraw. I'm pretty sure this is deterministic to get you to lethal. Uh, not 100% sure, but... I, I think the star draw is just enough. It was highly likely we were going to win the game even without the star draw, just having access to Wellspring second KCI thought monitor. Uh, but yeah. No, no, like, I, I, like with star, you're just going to draw through your whole deck. Like, you just get so many draws. Like, you're, you're they're dead. <laughs> they're, they're, they are super dead. And yeah, nice turn to kill with defense grid protection. Uh, we had a top deck pretty nice to get there, but our deck is sick. Uh, so we're gonna take infinite turns and blow up all their permanents and kill them with creatures. That's our win con. All right, round four, vintage playing. Currently two one with our KCI deck. Let's see if we can continue the nonsense. Oh, that is certainly continuing the nonsense. A turn one Mystic Forge is always something I'm interested in. I am very interested in this. Let's see what we can do. So I'm looking at Workshop Vault, Forge, just Jam Forge. And obviously if Forge doesn't resolve, then it's not great. We like lost our Mana Vault, but it's still going to power our Academy... And we still have... Yep, this is probably fine. I wonder if there's any justification... No. I was like thinking of like a Saga Mana Vault, but then I can't play Forge. So I am going to just jam, because you kind of just have to do that with KCI. And I'm going to jam Forge, because I think it's the strongest play here. 
and make sure to use my artifact mana. All right, so KCI. I do want a KCI, so I, don't, I won't get rid of that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, the format is particularly well balanced right now. There are a large number of different viable decks, and no deck is winning too much. Um, there's obviously a little bit too many Tinker decks, but they're not even doing that well. Um, so, currently the format is in a pretty good spot. Alright, so they have Sapphire Go. Uh, I do want a KCI, so we're just going to draw this KCI. Alright, so that's a sick draw. I like that one. So we're just going to get value and play this off the top. Oh, Mystic Forge is so broken. I don't know if anyone played during the era where um, where Mystic Forge was a four of. It was so bad. Uh, okay, we're going to keep going. Mystic Forge continuing to be broken. Yeah, Karn era. Not a good place to be. Oh, nice. Draw through the island. All right, so we're now we're stuck. I have a lot of options still. Um, I can clear the top with Thought Monitor. I can clear the top with Manifold Key. I can clear the top with Sacking a Wellspring. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to untap my Mana Vault. And then I'm just going to try to hold my Academy for as long as possible. Yeah, four Forge, four Karn was a hell of a time. I'm going to play this Karn Clan, Kark Clan Ironworks, see if it gets countered. Didn't get countered. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just use my Wellspring to draw through my top. And now I have a Karn on top. So I will definitely play a Karn. Uh, I might make my mana first here, actually. Yeah. So we should win the game on this turn. Um, don't want to use blue mana, though. So I'm going to play a Karn because it's colorless. <laughs> And then I'm going to go get a Lattice, and once the Lattice resolves, my opponent can no longer play spells, so. They did, basically. Alright. So, that's just a turn two kill. KCI, baby! Experience the joy of game actions. Yeah, so, this is a great example of why Mystic Forge is restricted. We had a good example earlier of why Trinisphere is restricted. Now you get a good example of why Mystic Forge is restricted. Ugh, man. That was pretty sweet. We don't even know what our opponent is playing. All we saw was Fetchland and Sapphire, which narrows nothing down. So... I'm just gonna resubmit. <coughs> I don't know if I want to put in, like, an answer to, uh, like possible oof or something no i think i just resubmit it just it's, it's just not narrow enough um off of like sapphire tarn does nothing to narrow it down this hand's great too man the, we've had some nice hands after round one. Oh yeah absolutely um i haven't played edh in a long time but when i did the most recent the most recent time i played edh uh i played a shroom deck so yeah i'm sure you understand <laughs> In EDH, not for me, but I understand why uh, it's super popular and why people enjoy it. So, always cool to let people have their fun. Um. Okay, so Bola Citadel is playable in this deck. Uh, my biggest problem is you're not very good at using your Citadel. Like, you can hit a lot of large costing cards, run out of life, and not really use your Citadel. I think Citadel is playable in the KCI shell. Um, but I don't think it's, like, necessary. I think most of the time when you resolve Tinker and get Cart Clan or Spine or Godfair Statue or Trinisphere, like, or Mystic Forge, uh, it's good enough. So I kind of think that Citadel being a very hard-to-cast card, I, I, I would rather just not include it. But I don't think I fault people for including Citadel inside their KCI decks. All right, my opponent is looking at my hand. I can F6. They mulliganed a lot on this turn. It looks like they mulliganed down to four cards, and they kept Probe into Island into Preordain. Not a bad start. We still don't know if our opponent is playing a fair blue deck or an unfair blue deck. Um, that will 
definitely dictate how this ma match goes. The thing is, my opponent knows that I have what I have. So what do they have? Narset is a bad thing for me. Okay, so Merchant Scroll for Ancestral off of Black Lotus is not too big a deal. Yo, good night, Mario. Have a good one. Um, obviously, this is a pretty good play for my opponent as they get to refill their hand, but it still costs them, you know, Black Lotus and Scroll to play Ancestral, so it's not the end of the world. Citadel is just a broken card, for sure. So my opponent got to cast many game actions here. We'll have to figure out if they end up with a Force of Will or not. For us, we have access to one, or sorry, three, five, four, mm, minus two or one. So we could say, we, we could probably, so the, unfortunately we can't go Workshop, Soul Ring, that's four mana, Wellspring, uh, two mana, Opal, three mana. Can't play Ironworks. But I could do top, and it might still be worth it. So what I think I'm going to do is... Workshop, Soul Ring, top. Oh, they have a missed up? That'd be not great. Well, the problem is I only have five mana, so I can just cast the KCI first and then eat the Soul Ring to play the Wellspring. It's playable. It's playable. Well, the problem is Opal currently doesn't make mana until I have a second artifact in play, so I have to play either Ironworks, Wellspring, or Top. I do think that we... I'm just worried that they have Days... They could be like a blue, um, blue red deck. Really don't want to be dazed. We don't have to play KCI on this turn. We can play all of our things and spin. Well, the Mox isn't going to get dazed. I have a Soul Ring in play, and I'm just trying to figure out if I want to play KCI on this turn. I think I just do. All right, just resolved. Wow. All right, so what I'm going to do is... What am I going to do? How much am I allowed to sh sacrifice? I don't want to sack the soul ring until I have a trawler. Well, I think there's a possibility we can win on this turn, not me. Like, we have access to Wellspring Top. I um, think at this point, with the KCI resolving, we can just go all in. I think what I'm going to do is I will make a blue mana, sack my Opal, and play a Top and Spin. Maybe that's worse than drawing a random card. Man, I don't know if drawing a random card is better than play a top and spin. It's probably better to play a top and spin because I can still sack the top if I wanted to. What am I looking for exactly? I'm looking for a trawler. Okay. Well, sometimes you have it. So, I think we just draw sack. And then we get a trawler, and then we sack our soul ring. And we get back our opal. Opal. Replay. Blue. Sack our opal. Play a Wellspring, draw with Wellspring, play our Opal, Blue, sack our Wellspring, get back a top, draw, draw, play our top, spin our top. Okay. So Time Vault's good because we get to keep going. So now draw. 
sack, sack, opal, this, time vault. We technically are not infinite here. We need to find more stoof. Um, so this is going to get us our top back. And we know that we don't have, we know two of our cards. We could be out, out of luck here. Or we can hit like a thought monitor and win the game. Nope, we, we missed, we missed. Okay, so now we're, we're out, unfortunately. We could technically sack Ironworks and get back a Wellspring or even a Time Vault. But we shouldn't do that. We should just pass into Shattering Spree. So we were not unable to find a star, so we could not win on turn one. I don't think I have any other strong plays here. Like I could sack Trawler and bring back Wellspring and sack Top and Wellspring, and that does dig us forward, but then we lost our Trawler. And I don't think that's a good idea. So I think we just have to pass the turn here. It's unfortunate for sure, but it was pretty unlikely. It wasn't super unlikely. We had a top with like five or six looks deep. All we really needed was find um, like a star or something. Or even just a thought monitor or a blue spell. Those would have been pretty good as well. All right. Do they have another color? Are they? Okay. They are not. They are not another color. Uh, so I typically have a Gigantha in the board. That's interesting. Um, I do typically play a Gigantha in the board. But I decided it wasn't worth it to show that I had a Gigantha. <laughs> I, I, I decided that the information loss was too bad. I'm trying to figure out if I want to do anything in response to this. I don't think so. Um, so maybe I was supposed to stack my mana crypt. I definitely want to play a saga this turn and start getting that going. Yeah, yeah, we could have had a Gigantha for sure. Like, I don't think like it's bad to play Gigantha. I just valued the, um, I valued them not knowing I didn't have force of will higher. Could be wrong. Maybe I'm just not supposed to reveal Gigantha. Echoing Truth. What deck plays Echoing Truth? All right, we lost our KCI, but we have a Saga and they have one card, so. Like, is this just Blue Red Murktide? I don't know if our Saga technically races a Murktide here. Like, if my opponent plays Blue Red, plays a Murktide, do we even race that? I would think no. Yeah, that's some magic online. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't think it's bad to play Gigantha is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I want all of this. Not all of this, but. All right. I mean, my new plan is just make sagas. Cause I don't really, I don't have like a star. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to figure out how much mana I have. I definitely want to play the second saga now. I have enough for an artifact spell. I have enough to spin first though. So I have this two to pay for saga this to pay for scrap trawler and i can still spin and look for a better card all right well that is all mana but i just can get rid of it with my saga here that card's quite good all right i mean i still successfully created a lot of card advantage so i'm in a good spot my opponent's already used Lotus Ancestral. I guess something I could be worried about here is maybe Underworld Breach plus Brain Freeze. That's something I could lose too. Like that, that's a deck that would play Hercules Recall on Echoing Truth, right? 
Maybe it's like a blue red uh, breach deck. A braid on my trawler. Is that even good? That just gets me back a time vault and they lose. Yeah, that is not a good play. Yeah, this is not the strongest play my opponent has made. Uh, I am going to get back my time vault from my yard and then my Urza Saga is going to get a manifold key. And then I don't technically win because I have a mana crypt in play, but uh, I do technically win because my clock is going to be infinitely big here. Very large. Uh, do I have enough mana to make a construct? I should. All right. Uh, what is this? I don't know what that is. Maybe they're just F6 thing. All I know is I just get a manifold key and then I play a time vault and I take infinite ish turns. And I think my opponent probably concedes. Oh, playing around needle. That makes sense. That makes complete sense. That's a good play. All right. We did it. So I think it's probably Grixis Tinker Breach. So there were definitely outs for our opponent here. Opponent simply drawing um, Underworld Breach is lethal. So my opponent could draw Breach, play Breach, play Lotus, play Merchant Scroll for Brain Freeze, and go and combo kill me. So it's actually really scary. Um, I think it was correct for us to go for the turn one kill. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out, but we had a lot of looks off of our top. So, yeah, I feel pretty good about the way we approach that game. I'm happy. Here we are, fifth and final round for all the marbles. If we win, we get our constructed event token. If, we get, if I can later get a limited event token, I get to play in the 20th anniversary Magic Online event, which will be cool. I'll be down for that. Uh, so do that. We need to win here and go 4-1. We are up against Dashik, who recently played an aggro shops deck in the most recent tournament. Uh, here, I don't know if we should keep this hand. It's not a bad hand, but it's so slow hand. No fast mana, no blue mana. It does have a KCI and a Mystic Forge, but we're on the draw against possibly playing shops. With no fast mana, I think I'm just going to mulligan this. I think we're going to look for something better. Use the power of London. See what we can find. Uh, I obviously instantly get punished by finding a hand that has absolutely no mana. All right, we will go to five. <laughs> no land? Um, shit, I guess we're going to go to four. This is not how I wanted it to go. But I, I do think you're supposed to use the mulligan there. Unfortunately, having our 6 and our 5 both have no mana in them. Well, this one technically has a mana, but you can't keep this against shops either. Uh, you can't keep this in general, so. Okay, this is our best hand, so keep. Uh, I am going to put the spine back in the deck. I am going to put the top back in the deck. And then this is an interesting question this is an interesting question i guess it's not i guess it's just you get rid of time walk forge is your best card and we have a nice saga plan well i can go turn one saga sapphire i'm just worried we won't i mean this that'd be a true saga test Okay, I'm in. We're gonna we're about to find out exactly how good Urza Saga is. This is the true test for Urza Saga. Can th this four card hand on the back of entirely Urza Saga win the game? Uh 
Our opponent has a significantly better start. A Nettle Cyst. That's like a Saga. And an R R Revoker. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's correct. All right. All right. Well, they had no spheres, which is really good for us. We're going to get to at least get one construct token before getting wastelanded. Yeah, that was like a classic Justin experience where I'm like, this seven card hand is playable, but probably not good enough. I should try to use the London Mulligan, get a better hand. Uh, instantly, I have four cards in my hand all of a sudden. <laughs> all right, so we're looking for... I mean, Time Vault's our best draw. But even like another Saga or some low-cost artifacts maybe... Well, say it ain't so. So, I don't think we're supposed to play Time Vault. And the reason is uh, Second Revoker and also Wasteland. Um, the way that backfires is maybe... Well, Sphere I should still be able to play through. So I think we just want to make a Construct. I don't think we want to reveal Time Vault in case of Second Revoker. See what happens here. We don't want to get Wastelanded, obviously. But not nothing I can do about Wasteland at this point. I just have to hope they don't have Wasteland or Strip Mine. Prophetic Prism. Okay. Can't block with this Saga token, really. Take 7, go to 11. Yeah, I mean, I think we beat a large subset of cards here. But we definitely lose to a certain subset as well. Mainly Wasteland. We should beat a single Sphere. We should beat... Do we beat Trinisphere? We should still beat Trinisphere. Um... Do we lose to Revoker on Sapphire? No. We would lose to a combination of Revoker, Sapphire, and Sphere. Unless we drew land. Um, it's really the, the one thing we truly want to dodge is Wasteland Strip Mine. What you got, homie? I'm interested. I want to know. Okay. Thorn, we are currently okay with. Playing three for it. That's it? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really see any reason to block. What? All right, so as long as I float my mana. Get a key. Let's make this bigger. Play a time vault and take infinite turns. Mold of four, not a problem. Good God, I'm so lucky. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Oh, my lord. That is a hell of a high roll. I thought we were, like, 5% to win that game. That is absurd. I do feel that that's the best part of Saga, is the ability to search for a uh, Manifold Key. Or one of the best parts of Saga is it's, it's like... Well, the, the, the fact that it's Tutor ability is both Black Lotus and Manifold Key is, like... Mm. 
Well, I didn't think that was going to be how that one went, but I am happy to say that it did go that way. Um, I want to board out Trinisphere on the draw versus shops, and so do I want to board out God Pharaoh's statue on the draw versus shops. I would like to bring in uh, Sky <laughs> Sky Sovereigns. I think we want some number of dismember. I don't know how many. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's the final the final confirmation. Saga is good. <laughs> uh, I don't think Saga is busted, but obviously it did the job there. I think top decking Time Vault was pretty busted, but like Saga tokens would not have won that game, which is a really you know, that was a big part of the test, honestly. I was going to see if, like, a time walk into double Saga token was enough to keep, uh, to win the game. Uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't going to be good enough. So, I don't really know how much, like, I don't know how much you're allowed to attribute that to Saga. Like, obviously a lot, because it did find the key, but I'm not sure. Anyways, I, I think you want Dismember so that you can kill Revoker. Um, so I'm going to bring in all the things that kill Revoker. Um, there is no top eight. It's just a uh, uh, five rounds of Swiss. Why is there a blight steel? We want that for our tinker. I didn't know there was a blight steel on our sideboard. I don't think we played against any opponents that I would board in blight steel against, but I kind of didn't notice it was there. Um, we probably want needle on wasteland. This is a lot of cards, so I need to figure out what to take out. Uh, what do I take out? I have a minute to decide. Um, I, I'm thinking I'm taking out Karn. Not, maybe not. I think Karn is just... Hmm. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to take out here, honestly. I don't know how we get this many cards in. I think I might just do some trimming of my combo pieces. I guess I'm going to leave a Ballista in the Karn board. I think this is totally reasonable. Congrats, Sode. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one in my Karn board and just trim some combo cards. I don't know if that's the correct thing to do here, but it feels reasonable. This hand is interesting. This hand is definitely interesting. Uh, move you back over here. Right, our opponent has decided to keep their seven. I'm also going to keep my seven. I have a lot of mana. Okay, we're leading on Saga, and that's it. That's an interesting play. Um, it's a good sign for us. Let's deploy... Uh, I'm okay with deploying my fast mana. If my opponent decides to wasteland me instead of using their so like mana for Saga, I think that's a great place for us to be. Uh, I currently am playing this Thought Monitor. I have three mana off. Wow, I can just play this Thought Monitor. That's quite strong. I think that's better than playing uh, KCI. I think it's better to just play the Thought Monitor here, maybe draw more Moxon. Yo, what's up, Thor? Thanks for joining us. Interesting. So I could actually name Saga on this needle. I'm super far ahead already. I don't know what kind of seven card hand you keep that Saga go, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, I don't think playing around Mind Break Trap is a winning line. I would just down to jam into it. Yeah, so th that's what I figured, but this does not feel good enough. I, maybe my opponent has a higher opinion of Urza Saga than I do, but I do not think that Saga tokens against KCI is going to be fast enough to win. But I guess they don't know we're on KCI, right? Did we show them any cards that would say we we're on KCI? We did show them Time Walk, but they could just think we're on like 8 cast maybe. All right, so I think we just win the game here. Uh, it's not guaranteed, but it does look pretty winning. Mm, it was good enough for me because of Time Vault. It wasn't good enough for me because of uh, Saga tokens, right? Um, and my opponent deck does not play that, that card. 
So, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just about time to do the KCIing. We'll see what happens. Uh, I think what I'll do is make blue, sack the opal, play the trawler. Uh, I'm going to turn. This is not technically enough yet. I'm going to turn this into a blue mana. I think it's a little bit better than... I guess I have an opal, so I don't really need to do that. So I do, I can turn the time vault into a star, and then I can turn the thought monitor into anything. So let's sack my opal. Let's grab a time vault. Let's, what is this? Oh, they're going to F6, fair enough. Um, I'm going to sack my time vault and get a new star. I'm going to sack my star and I'm going to get my opal. Oh, we bricked again there. Um, so what we can do is we can sack the ironworks because we can, uh, and then get back the time vault because I have a lot of mana currently. So sack the opal, play the ironworks, sack the ironworks, get back a time vault. It's only getting me one card. Sack the time vault, get back a star. Sack a star, draw a new card. What do we got? New cards, anybody? New cards? That's a sapphire. Uh, uh oh. All right. So, uh, does it get me more mana? I don't know. All right. So, I'm going to sack my thought monitor. Can I just, I just go get a star? Do I make any mana off of any of these? I guess I don't make any mana off of any of these. All right. We got one more draw here. Manifold key. That does it. Oh my god, that does it. <laughs> Sack the trawler, get back a time vault. Turn two kill. Not there. Constructed token acquired. KCI always comes in the clutch for me. I go play a real deck. No shot. No chance. I turn on KCI for one stream. Instant 4 1. Done. Easy. <laughs> we drew real hot today. It was really sweet. Um, this deck is one of my favorites. I really enjoy playing it. It makes me very happy. Which is a good thing in a magic deck. Um, I think we need to make some changes because I just forgot some things. I think we want a fourth Thought Monitor in this deck. I think Thought Monitor is just too broken not to include. Uh, and I, I don't really know that these statues are good. I boarded them out a lot. Um, we've cast exactly one and it didn't do anything. So I put one statue back away. I actually think, I don't know, I need to get more games to test with it. I really liked Moon Silver Key in this slot as an additional way to find KCI. Um, I don't know. I really liked Moon Silver Key. I think I think I would go back to Moon Silver Key, even in the slots where I had statue, they were never really gonna be good. I don't know. It, it could be good. It's it technic. Oh, well, Moon Silver Key also finds blue mana, so it's not like I'm taking out something that finds blue mana or something that doesn't find blue mana. This finds an artifact with a mana ability or a basic land, 
Um, so I can get Cart Clan Ironworks. I can get Island. I can get Star, um, which I really like. Uh, that is a card I like to play a Coveted Jewel when I have a key. Uh, but I think I like to play a Thought Monitor more. And I don't know where I would fit a Coveted Jewel. I wouldn't play a Coveted Jewel without a key. Um, yeah. Well, Ravager being a sack outlet for Trawler is, like, very nice. And I definitely think it's possible Ravager is still the correct call. But, um, no, we cast Statue once in the first game and it did nothing. Um... Key, key would have been better in the situation we had. I like Key, and I think Ravager's fine, but... No, I don't think you need a Jewel. I guess we could play a Jewel in the sideboard because we're no longer playing a Thought Monitor. That's an interesting idea. I just don't think you want a Metamorph or need a Metamorph. Like, I want a 2. I think... Moonsilver is better. Like, a lot of times you just don't have anything good to copy off of Metamorph. I like the idea of putting a jewel in the sideboard, though. Cool. Sweet. I don't know. There's a lot of, like, little tweaks you can make to the deck, but, like, the core of the deck is really solid. Like, I wouldn't cut any of these cards. I wouldn't cut any of these cards. I wouldn't cut this. I wouldn't cut this. I wouldn't cut this, this, this. I don't think you can cut any of these. I don't think you can cut any of these. <laughs> or this. Or this. Or this. Well, all right. I think these are technically your flex slots. Uh, and I like very highly rate both statue and spine, even though we didn't do any spining. And I think thought monitor, like the problem with thought monitor is it's hard to get the blue mana. Um, but like it's just so good at always being like a continual combo card. Uh, no, no, I think you need access to spine to kill permanents. Like, there are a large amount of permanents that you do need to kill. Um, and I, I think you do want spine. Uh, Mirror Retriever is just kind of unnecessary. Like, you loop through very easily. Um, so I think, like, the Moonsilver Key and the map are your, like, biggest places where you can flex. So, I wouldn't play Brainstorm in this deck, no. If anything, like, you might want to play a Mental Misstep in this deck. That's something you can choose to do as well. Uh, but I just don't think you want Mirror Retriever. I don't think it's necessary. Um, like, I've never had a problem comboing off when I have the cards, like, Scrap Trawler and Ironworks. Like, you just always win, pretty much. Like, obviously, there are some amounts of fizzling you can do. And we did do that, what, once on turn one. Um, but, uh, overall... If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe and help me grow the channel. Uh, as always, new videos are coming out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. So be sure to come back and check those out. And I will see you in the next video.